some people, Christmas and the New Year are very merry times. But for cabmen and cabmen's horses, it is no holiday, though it may be a harvest. There are so many parties and balls and places of amusement open that the work is hard and often late. Sometimes driver and horse have to wait for hours in the rain or frost, shivering with the cold, while the merry people within are dancing away to the music. I wonder if the beautiful ladies ever think of the weary cabman waiting on his box and his patient beast standing till his legs get stiff with cold. I had now most of the evening work, as I was well accustomed to standing, and Jerry was also more afraid of hot spur taking cold. We had a great deal of late work in the Christmas week, and Jerry's cough was bad. But however late we were, Polly sat up for him, and came out with a lantern to meet him, looking anxious and troubled. On the evening of the New Year, we had to take two gentlemen to a house in one of the West End squares. We set them down at nine o'clock and were told to come again at eleven. But, said one, as it is just a card party, you may have to wait a few minutes, but don't be late. As the clock struck eleven, we were at the door, for Jerry was always punctual. The clock chimed the quarters. One, two, three, and then struck twelve, but the door did not open. The wind had been very changeable, with squalls of rain during the day, but now it came on sharp and driving sleet, which seemed to come all the way round it. It was very cold, and there was no shelter. Jerry got off his box and came and pulled one of my cloths a little more over my neck. Then he took a turn or two up and down, stamping his feet. Then he began to beat his arms, and that set him off coughing. So he opened the cab door and sat at the bottom with his feet on the pavement, and was a little sheltered. Still the clock chimed the quarters and no one came. At half past twelve, he rang the bell and asked the servant if he would be wanted that night. Oh yes, you'll be wanted safe enough, said the man. You must not go. It will soon be over. And again, Jerry sat down, but his voice was so hoarse I could hardly hear him. At a quarter past one, the door opened and the two gentlemen came out. They got into the cab without a word and told Jerry where to drive. That was nearly two miles. My legs were numb with cold and I thought I should have stumbled. When the men got out, they never said they were sorry to have kept us waiting so long, but were angry at the charge. However, as Jerry never charged more than was his due, so he never took less, and they had to pay for the two hours and a quarter waiting. But it was hard-earned money to Jerry. Mm -hmm.